Welcome to QD Clinic. QD Clinic is brought to you by Room Now Live 2024. It's happening in Dallas on the 27th and 28th. Be there. It's a meeting for big shot rheumatologists. It's a big time meeting. Um, today's case is when do you give rituximab in RA? So this patient of mine um, has been on a lot of different therapies and Recently, she's 54, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, also has a history of pulmonary embolism and antiphospholipid syndrome. She's taken methotrexate, prednisone, and Tylenol. Ten months ago, she was given um, her first course of rituximab and did really, really well. RA is certain. She's strongly seropositive for RF, um, CCP. She's got nodules. She does have an ANA. She does have erosions and contractures. Uh, previously treated with methotrexate, plaquenil, sulfazalazine, orencia, and a JAK inhibitor, and then got rituximab, did really well. Um, and at her last visit, she was doing good. She had normal sed rate and CRP, and I think like um, two tender and one swollen joint. Um, and her CDI score was seven, right? So... On this visit, she comes in, she says she's not done well, it's over the summertime, she's um, uh, said that she's been flaring and her um, she didn't want to take any more prednisone and she didn't want to come in sooner, but now she's in, she says she's fair, her pain is 7 out of 10, she's got problems in her wrist, fingers, um, and arms, um, she's not sure if she has swelling. When, you, when I see her... She's got 14 tender joints, five swollen joints, including activity mainly in the hands, MCPIPs, and wrists. Her CDI score is up to 29. It was seven, right? And the question is, what am I going to do with her? And the, obviously, the answer is uh, give her rituximab. Um, I wish I'd seen her before she had this flare um, or in the throes of it. So now it's going to take a week to set up her rituximab and maybe another two to four weeks before she fully responds to the rituximab. And this begs the question, when you put someone on rituximab, and I think you should use more rituximab, it's a great drug. It's got an incredibly good safety profile. Um, and you only have to give it like every six or 12 months. And it works better in people with high titer CCP and high titer RF. I mean, you got a biomarker here. Um, again, but we tend to use this almost like last ditch in RA, and I think that's a big mistake. I'm very pro rituximab because I've used a lot of it. I did the clinical trials on it, uh, and, and I was impressed way back then. So here are the rules. The package insert says that the dosing in RA for rituximab is that it should be used in combination first with methotrexate and given as two thousand milligram effusions infusions that are two weeks apart and then it can be reconsidered at 24 weeks or on demand based on your clinical evaluation but no sooner than every 16 weeks okay they do recommend that you give methylprednisolone or an equivalent glucocorticoid 30 minutes prior to infusion i gave up on methylprednisolone and only use hydrocortisone or nothing I find most patients don't really need it. There are a few who have reactions to the drug, and in those you would pre-medicate. So do I do it on demand or on schedule? And I can tell you that I just do on demand. And I'm thinking about it after six months. I'm strongly considering writing the prescription and the order at 12 months. But I wait until that they want, and I ask them, do you want to get this before you flare, do you want to kind of wait and see how you do? And most people want to say, I want to wait and see how I do. I got a bunch of patients who had like one or two in courses, and that's it. A course is two infusions that are done two weeks apart. But I have one patient who had horrible disease. Like you would be shocked. Got one course and went into remission, stopped not just rituximab, but all DMARDs. And I saw the patient every year. They really had nothing. But... Anyway, that's and, and, and again, it was clear cut RA, etc. Anyway, so I do on demand, and again, I consider it after six, and I'm really thinking about it at 12. I will go as long as maybe you know 16, uh, 16 months before I give it again, um, and that's sort of my schedule. 
But there are many of you that will give this every six months as scheduled. Some of you, when the patient isn't doing well, will give it every three months or four months. Don't do that. If you need to give rituximab more frequent than every six months, that's your cue to find a new therapy. That's the beginning of the end of rituximab as effective therapy, right? So, and a lot of my prescribing habits have translated to vasculitis management. I'm a little more likely to use Q6 month dosing in vasculitis, and I also go down to low dose rituximab. There's plenty of studies in RA and also some in vasculitis that say that you may not need the thousand given two weeks apart. Uh, that you could give 500 two weeks apart, or you give 1,000 as a single infusion. Again, I do that more in vasculitis than I do in RA. RA, you're pretty much going to get um, the 1,000 milligrams done uh, two weeks apart on demand, as I like to do it. But there is good research saying that you could do 500 instead of 1,000 or 1,000 once in people who are stable. And maybe that's the big take home here. If patients have done incredibly well with rituximab, then you can be more like on demand and use alternative lower doses. But if they haven't achieved remission and they haven't gotten to low disease activity state, then you probably need more frequent dosing and scheduled dosing. And you might need to, if they need less than six months dosing, start thinking about your next drug choice. Tune in for more QD Clinics.